In today's world, the idea of leaving one firm for another or even leaving a firm to start your own practice is not as wild as it used to be. For the first time in history, lawyers have been laid off, terminated, fired, whatever you want to call it, but they're no longer with the firm. I'd like to talk a little bit today about what to do before you jump ship or before you're pushed over as the case may be. So let's talk about the decision process. Let's talk about the decision if it's yours to make. There are at least three phases here to think about. One is you make the decision to leave because of personality. And by that I mean the people. Who are the people with whom you're working? Are they people that you really like? Are they people that you want to spend, what, 60, 70 percent of your day with? Are they people that you respect and you trust? Trust is a big word here and one that I think cannot be overemphasized. So we're talking about personality. You're not going to leave if all the personalities are good, meaning that by and large you like the people with whom you're spending your day and some evenings. One of my clients, a large firm, went through a rough patch a, a short while ago. And in my opinion, each one of the lawyers there, all of whom were outstanding lawyers, could have perhaps even doubled their personal compensation. And I asked them point blank. I said, why is it that you all are staying together when you don't have to, when you can, if not double, at least substantially increase your personal compensation elsewhere? And he came back at me and he said, very simply, we like to be together. And we don't want to put in 3,000 hours a year or 2,500 hours a year. We work hard. We do good work. We represent our clients well. And most importantly, we enjoy being together. So if you're that, in that kind of an environment, you really have to be careful about your thought process before you decide to leave. The second is economics. And I alluded to this just a moment ago. What is your personal compensation? Another of my clients was earning a substantial amount of money, but in her opinion, she was earning substantially less than her male counterparts because the firm didn't recognize the quality of what she was doing. In her case, she decided to leave, and of course, she more than doubled her personal compensation. So economics is a big factor not to be discounted. And the third is the values. What are the values of the firm? What's the firm culture? Is it an eat what you kill kind of culture and one that you are really not comfortable with? You'd like to be more collegial. Or is it a collegial law firm? You know, everybody working toward each, uh, for each other as a team. And you really want to uh, show your entrepreneurial spirit and be rewarded for it and not be pulled down by what everybody else is not doing. Is the firm culture inclusive or is it exclusive? These are three factors that I think are super important for you to think about and evaluate carefully before you jump ship. Now, <clears throat> what happens if the decision is made for you? If you're sort of pushed off the ledge, if it's an up or out environment, you get some pretty good clues uh, early on. And in order to prevent yourself from being in this position involuntarily, I suggest as you move through your career, the second, third, fourth, fifth years of your career, be sure that you are taking cognizance of this. Do not put your head down. Uh, do not put your head in the sand. Do not keep your, uh, your nose to the grindstone, whatever metaphor you want to use, without being cognizant of your surrounding environment and thinking about what you need to do in order to protect yourself so that you are not up or out but rather up and in. Another uh, situation occurs when the firm decides to de-equitize. That's a fancy word today for terminating partners and in at least one if not more famous cases of large firms They've been sued by the EEOC. They've been sued uh, by individual, uh, quote, partner, unquote, as they were forced out. 
and they all have lost their cases. In other words, though you're called a partner, it is not sacrosanct and you are not necessarily involved in the day-to-day decision-making uh, process of management. And so when you're de-equitized, uh, you need to take stock and decide what it is you want to do. Take a look at your book of business. Be sure you understand what you're bringing to the table. The more you have in the way of a book of business, the more clients uh, to whom you're responsible and for whom you're responsible, the less likely you're going to be in that position. Be sure that you uh, try to share your cases and cross-sell. The more you cross-sell other members in the law firm, the more you share your work and require others to work with you to protect the interests of the clients, the less likely you are uh, to be in the position of de-equitization. Uh, make sure that you bring in work that has to be uh, delegated to associates and others in the law firm. The more you do that, the less likely you're going to be de-equitized. Now, given all of this, let's say that you are on the verge of leaving the firm, whether from your own decision or because of the de-equitization process. It's still not easy to do. Leaving the law firm is an emotional uh, transaction. There will be feelings of anger, there will be feelings of being hurt, there will be feelings of sadness. All of this do not, as most lawyers do, just create a stone wall and ignore those emotions. Learn how to deal with them. Have a support system that will help you understand what those emotions are and how to deal with them. And the reason I say this is because revenge and anger, i.e. hurt, is not something, these are not emotions that will help you do what you need to do to get on with your life, to get on with your career. So recognize the emotional parts of it. Get the support that you need from colleagues, from um, friends, and, and so forth, and then move on. Move on positively. Be sure you do not burn your bridges because the folks that you leave behind quite possibly can give you lots of referral business if and when the occasion arises. So, in conclusion, let me suggest that this is an interesting process. We live, as the Chinese say, in interesting times. And those of us who can understand what's happening and take advantage of the opportunities, yes, opportunities that await you, will come up standing on our feet instead of knocked down. Take advantage of the opportunity that faces you. Thanks for joining us today. This is On the Road with Ed Pohl.